Hi, today I'm going to talk about separation. Did you know that the primary cause of racism, bigotry, gender inequality, war and poverty is a sense of separation? When people feel disconnected from each other, fear arises. And all these issues are fear-based. In fact, separation goes even deeper than that. The smartphone you may be holding in your hand is a separate object, is it not? You may not fear it because it has proven to provide lots of benefits like connecting you with engaging information and other people. On the other hand, if you feel so attached to your phone that you can't sustain a reasonable conversation with a live person without getting distracted by it, that sense of separation surfaces and you may begin to fear your smartphone. We all know that there are apparent differences between objects like cars, tables, food items, tennis rackets, medications, and ourselves. So we learn to live with those differences, hoping that they won't do us harm. Then there's death, the ultimate separation. In short, bye-bye, body. <laughs> Fear of death is always with us. As a result, many of us avoid physical danger like the plague. Religions try to soothe our separation anxiety while controlling their own demise, with promises of heaven and threats of hell. Then there is a sense of separation between our desires, expectations, and reality. If reality doesn't play ball, we become disappointed and question our luck, our competence, and our sense of belonging in this world. We get concerned, which is another form of fear. Separation also stands between who we believe ourselves to be and who we really are at the core of our being. If you don't buy into this, ask yourself the question, am I perfect? If the answer is no, and you're not a narcissist, <laughs> then separation has you in its grip. Separation is one of the three veils that obscure our hearts and minds. For some people, the veil is denser than a Persian rug, while for others, as thin as sheer fabric. In reality, the veil of separation is like the emperor's new clothes. In fact, it's all in our heads. But try convincing yourself that the bedroom wall you're facing doesn't exist by attempting to walk through it. Then see what happens. The electromagnetic forces in your body get in the way and you bump your head hard. Your mind says, uh, that's not an option. In reality, all things, including ourselves, are forms of energy, of highly interconnected quantum entities. The mind, however, doesn't easily perceive that, especially when it relies on the five senses. So how come we're wrapped like mummies in the veil of separation in the first place? It seems like an excessive device designed to torture us from the cradle to the grave. In fact, the veil of separation is also a blessing. That may come as a surprise. It creates longing. Have you ever felt homesick? If so, you may have become obsessed with finding ways to return home. Even though you're in a nice place surrounded by beautiful, nice people, there's still no place like home. In a similar way, down deep, the sense of separation makes us long to be complete, whole, to rest in union with something we can't even verbalize. This longing is what some have called the longing of the soul. It is a form of devotion, and we all have it, whether we recognize it or not. The journey home, however, may be a long one or a short one, depending on the choices we make. Separation is overcome through heartfulness. The mind may feel disconnected, but the heart always knows the way. It's been said many times throughout history that if we learn to love ourselves and others, if we develop compassion, forgiveness, kindness, acceptance, and so forth, there would be world peace. But for that to happen, heartfulness first needs to be directed inward towards ourselves. One way to start is to develop gratitude for every experience you've ever had, the ones you're having right now, and those you are about to have. Realize that your unsavory experiences have, at one level or another, given you the subconscious longing to go home, back to your original nature. 
uplifting experiences often suggest that there's more of that apple pie on the dining room table when you get there. <laughs> in short, deep within the heart lies the home we all seek. All the ups and downs in your life are guiding you to that sacred place whether you are aware of it or not. Reflect on this. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.